Praise the Lord, brothers and sisters. It's a real privilege to be with you all. About two weeks ago, I had a nice long phone chat with Satish and was asking all about you. And then after hearing that, I just couldn't wait to be here. It was like weeks became days, hours, and now it's like a beautiful dream come true. And I couldn't be more delighted as ever to be here, especially looking forward to Sunday morning. And I'm really blessed and so encouraged to hear of what God is doing in your midst. And when our dear brother Praveen was talking about, you know, how, and I love the way he said, I don't care how small we are. Just two weeks ago, Sadish and I were talking on a similar thing. And then Zechariah 4.10 stood out. And that is what I want to encourage you all. For who has despised the day of small things, small beginnings. We heard about small children. Aren't they a delight? When you pray, a little baby comes into our presence, we all go, oh, we get so excited. So just think, anything small is precious to God. So maybe you are a small church, it doesn't matter, but you're a united, loving, and a beautiful church that I have come to experience, and I really praise God for that. And one other thing I love to do is, is I love languages. So everywhere I go, I try to say a few words. So today I'd like to say, praise the Lord, Slava Domna Lui, Stotram, and I think there's no other languages here. Yeah, so I truly praise God for that. So after Satish had asked me if I'd like to share with you all, the very first word that came immediately to my heart is the sovereignty of God. And again, that relates to the subject of small beginnings. The sovereignty of God has been a very important part of my life. I remember when I was a youth in Bangalore many years ago, there we had a wonderful youth meeting. I was only about 19 or 20 because I got saved when I was 19, baptized. And I was in CFC. Actually, I was born and brought up in India because I come from a British background. But the sovereignty of God that my grandparents had to go to India, my parents were born there, I had to be born there. But the most beautiful thing I see about the sovereignty of God in my life in being born in India is being just two miles away from CFC Bangalore. And I had the pleasure of being there, getting saved, getting a good foundation, listening to strong rock foundation messages by Brother Zach. Oh, and that time Brother Zach was there almost 95% of the time. So I was privileged to get a brilliant, strong foundation from 88 to 93, and then the Lord brought me over to UK. But the subject of the sovereignty of God has been a tremendous blessing for me because in that youth, one of the youth meetings we had, but Zach spoke on this, and I've never forgotten that. You know, we, we hear that saying a lot, nothing happens for a reason. It's true, isn't it? So we may all figure out where I was born and brought up, where I studied, or which church I come to, you know, nothing happens for a reason. That's because the sovereignty of God is what overrules. And that is where we should be so encouraged. And that will keep us from getting discouraged, keep us from getting downcast, or it will help us to get cured from anxiety and worry. Because we are living in such evil, bad days with so much of happening around us, so many things happening across the world. And it's so easy to get anxious, so easy to get troubled. But the sovereignty of God is what I would like to encourage you all as it encouraged me to trust and believe that God is sovereign. Every de detail of our life, every area of our life is all under his sovereign control. Is all under his love and care. And that has helped me through the years to grow in faith, to grow in that security and rest in God. So I just want to turn to Isaiah 46. Isaiah 46, verse 10. Well, actually, I'll read from verse 9. 
Remember the former things long past. For I am God, and there is no other. I am God, and there is no one like me, declaring the end from the beginning, and from ancient times things which have not been done, saying, My purpose will be established, and I will accomplish all my good pleasure. Now these two verses is what struck me is my good pleasure. That itself should give us great encouragement and joy that whatever God has declared and has done and is doing and going to do is for his good pleasure. So that itself was a tremendous encouragement to me. And then I want to turn to Philippians 2 verse 13. There again. For it is God who is at work in you, both to will and to work for his good pleasure. Imagine. God wants to be sovereign over us. He wants to help us through. No, there are ups, there are downs, there's sickness, there's pain, there's pleasure, there's joy, there's fun, sorrows. We go through all that. But to believe that whatever God is doing ultimately works for his good pleasure. So that's what I want to encourage you all, is to concentrate on that. Whatever God allows. Now, sickness, pain, all that, I'm not saying God takes pleasure in. He doesn't give it to us, but he allows it. God never causes sickness or pain, but allows it in order for a purpose. And that is joy I've been getting to know about since uh, sickness over the last few years. I say, Lord, I don't want to grumble. If you've allowed this, it's because you want, in my experience, God wants to calm me down. Because in London, many of you don't know, we now will tell you all about it. I am such a fast person. I walk fast, I do things fast. I've, I've, I've gradually learned to talk slower, thankfully. Otherwise, mm -hmm. I might find I have to keep up. But yeah, I was, I'm just a very fast and I'm a very hyperactive person, almost like Timothy and James, I think. So, yeah, so, I, so sometimes when God allows sickness, definitely in my case, it's to slow me down. Like in the Psalms, Brother Zach loves to use that word, Selah, that means stop. Or oh, like in India, we speak in a conference, suddenly the pa goes off, obviously he cannot speak. And then he'll say, Selah, this is God's way of saying, stop, think about what you've heard. Stop, why has God allowed sickness, pain? loss, troubles, or why has God not given you something, can be another sorrow, or God has not done something. But whatever it is, to take this, to be encouraged that it's for his good pleasure. And that's been a tremendous encouragement to my heart. And then Proverbs 21.1, Satish and I were talking about this yesterday actually, how, you know, God, has planned our life and how he allows the different authorities uh, that we can be under and to allow uh, God to guide us in all his ways. Like it says in Psalm 55, 8 to 9, we all know that by heart, my ways are not your ways, my thoughts are not your thoughts. So Proverbs 21, 1 is a beautiful promise which says, the king's heart is like channels of water in the hand of the Lord. He turns it wherever he wishes. So the president, prime minister, king, queen, government, all are their hearts are like channels of water in the hand of the Lord. God, in his wisdom and sovereignty, turns wherever he wishes. 
So that's a great encouragement we should take. Sometimes, or even if we are under bosses at work, sometimes they may go one way, sometimes they may be crazy with you, they may be nice with you, but whatever happens, we need to go above them and say, Lord, I thank you. You've given me authority. You've given me whatever authority, but our hope and our confidence is you. We go above that to look unto God who's doing all things for his good pleasure. So again, that verse has also been a tremendous encouragement for me. They may grant you something, praise the Lord. If they don't grant you something, that is where we are tested, isn't it? You want time off? Sorry, no. You want to do something else? Sorry, no. I know for children, it's a big challenge when mommy and dad says, no, you can't get that chocolate. You can't go and play. Because one thing with children is they hate the word no. Don't you, children? No means, ooh, yes means, ah. So imagine, so even as adults to all of us, when it comes to God, sometimes God's way of saying no comes through the authorities to say, sorry, no, you can't have it. So there are many, many verses, but I don't want to take all your time and go through all of them, though it's tempting to. And then Colossians 1, actually before I move ahead, one burden on my heart that has been with the London church over the past few weeks is Philippians 2, 14. This is where all of us are tested every day. Where it says, now before that, it says for his good pleasure, right? We saw verse 13. But what follows verse 14 is something we all have to watch out for because it happens every day. And what we are doing with it is where we have to be careful. Do all things without grumbling or disputing. So grumbling and complaining is such an easy thing that happens with all of us, even with me too. I'm tested with that. Like Friday night flying out of JFK, New York was a big test. The queues just to go to security was so long. I could hear a few people grumbling, complaining, getting stressed. Excuse me, my flight is boarding. I need to go. Sorry, sorry, wherever you're going, it's the same queue. Thankfully, we still had about half an hour when we came to the gate. But the point is, you know, it was such a test. Everything else was going nice till then, but this long queue, you know, it was almost like getting to a little panic. But I kept looking at the I said, no, we should be fine because we are both fit, so we can both walk fast, get there. And then we got there 10 minutes, seven minutes before they started boarding. So either way, knew we will get there. But it was such a big test for me. I said, Lord, please, I don't want to grumble. I don't want to complain. But I was just feeling sad for the many who were practically fainting with fear. One girl was running up the escalator, almost fell with that trolley. And I thought, how sad. But no. So sometimes these things may happen. We don't know why. But grumbling and complaining, brothers and sisters, is something we are tested with every day. Because it just easily comes out. So that is something I've been learning to deal with lately. And because I've been lead, dealing with very seriously, God has given me tremendous peace and joy. And again, the sovereignty of God. I say, Lord, JFK, Heathrow, Dallas, whatever it is, doesn't matter. You, whatever you have allowed, is for, your, for the best. And of course, uh, Colossians 1.17, I want to turn to that quickly. Because this is another beautiful verse to keep in mind in the midst of all we're talking about. He is before all things, and in him all things hold together. Now I love the word it says in the margin. And in him all things endure together. We hear the word endure a lot, especially in the New Testament. He endures to the end. So I praise God, in God, all things endure together. And then verse 19, there again, 
for it is it was the father's good pleasure for all the fullness of to dwell in him amazing good pleasure it keeps coming quite a few times there may be other words as well but i don't take time and stress on all of that and then comes the most beautiful word one of the most beautiful verses that sums it up and i think hopefully i think all of us should not by heart it's romans 8:28 i believe most of us not by heart right all things work together for good to them that love god and are called according to his purposes when i first came across this word many years ago i didn't actually take it serious i didn't actually take it for granted but after hearing brother zack's explanation about it it gave me such a tremendous joy and encouragement and since then i learned to place that verse before me whatever happens whether it's a long queue short queue sickness pain loss whatever comes our way at least somebody comes and yells at you screams at you somebody tries to harm you god works all things for good as brother zack explained whatever he allows goes through his filter and it can only come out with god's permission that that explanation it just blessed my heart tremendously but we can easily take it for granted so i say we this is one verse we all need to keep in mind every day every hour home work in public airports stations whatever it is whatever god allows that's why here brother zack saying now he has been through as probably brother praveen satish will know very well he has been through tremendous attacks over the years especially in the beginning there are many things which none of us do not know only him and brother ian knows so we don't know why they are keeping it but probably it's for god's glory but nevertheless brother zack has always said till to from the time he was born till today what does he say no one has harmed me isn't that amazing we tend to say that sometimes oh this brother harm uh, sorry not brother sister but my boss or oh, this one harm me but after that even i stop saying that i say no nobody has harmed me nobody is at maybe people have attacked verbally physically whatever but in god's eyes whatever happened god had a purpose it was for the best maybe to humble us break us crush us melt us mold us whatever god allows is for the best after all it says to those who love him so if we truly love god there'll be no more grumbling complaining you see lord thank you you've allowed this for a purpose and i want to accept it and look up to you to help me see the way through it sometimes we may come across circumstances we just don't know what to do and i used to be very scared of those times when i'm just blank i said lord i don't know what to say i don't know what to do please help me but lately that is god has made it much easier for me and i say thank you lord you are with you uh, up front there's another beautiful verse philippians 4:13 i can do all things now do we believe all things through christ who strengthens me beautiful verse again when the going gets tough sometimes these verses tend to fly out of the window isn't it and i remember what i did a first aid first aid course to help at work and then suddenly i was called up few weeks later just to help someone with a little thing honestly i was i just blanked out and i had to run to the safe health safety man says you forgot your training didn't you remember what they said what's the first thing you do i said oh yeah thank you so it's the same even in the christian life sometimes when the going gets tough suddenly you're faced with a bizarre situation and you're just blank but immediately you say lord i don't know what's going on i don't know why you allowed it but i know you will help me through like one famous man of god many years ago I not sure who it was i think it's toza he says i've learned the art of when i'm in a tough situation to sit back and wait to see what god is going to do when i first heard that for me it was like oh no 
I can't imagine having such faith. But then when we are keen, when we are desperate and cry out to God to increase our faith, to increase our security and trust in him, God will gradually help us through it. And yes, today, praise God, I can say yes, I'm learning to do that. I'm not saying I'm fully there yet, but I am learning to say, Lord, I'm afraid. That is why, you know, we've heard from Bill Zach also many times, it's good to be honest. Be honest. Sometimes we tend to be a little proud, and tend to, oh, I think I'm just a little scared. Just say, no, I am scared. I am nervous. I'm afraid. Lord, please help me. Because when we are totally honest before God, then God can truly help us. But, you know, pride and reputation can be such a thing. We don't like, sometimes we don't like to say that, isn't it? Sorry, brother, but I'm afraid. Sorry, I, I can't do it. But no, it's best to be honest because God is sovereign. God allows, works everything for his good pleasure. So having said all that, we can take great joy in knowing that Romans 8, 28 is truly a beautiful verse. All things, all means all, day, night, whatever situation, whatever place, and especially in the workplace sometimes, we are all tested. Because I, I know, thankfully, the ITs, IT people work from home a lot, but I go to the office every day. So for me, I take that as God's training for me, to be in the office, and you know, sometimes they talk filthy conversations, they talk about the filthy things in the weekend, and they're just not ashamed, they just brag about it, they just, they don't have this, they don't have a filter. And sometimes, some of them are very happy, so oh, I'm thankful in this office, you know, we don't, there's no filter, we can just say what we like. But yet sometimes you accidentally say something, they complain. So they say one thing, but then they also don't like this or don't like that. But for me, I found in the office, it's been, it can be quite a challenge sometimes. But nevertheless, I praise God, he gave me the boldness to speak up, the manager's feedback. And then in the last two questions was the best of all. What would you like to see change in this office? And I thought, yeah, boy, here goes my chance. Mm -hmm. I said, a cleaner, moral atmosphere. One sentence. But in the huddle, they asked me to explain it. And I said, yeah. First of all, I do not like blasphemy. Because, you know, they say, oh, for Christ's sake, Jesus. Sake. I don't know how it is in America. Probably some do. But they do say it, isn't it? They use it like, and so much I remember one pastor in London brought it up. How come they don't say, oh, Allah, oh, Muhammad, oh, Buddha, oh, Krishna? But they use Jesus Christ. And I had the boldness to tell them, I said, you know why? That's because deep down, God has given us all a vacuum. And that vacuum is crying, actually crying out for Jesus Christ, the true God, the God of Jesus Christ. That vacuum from within is crying out. So I thought that is, so to me, that is a clear evidence of why they, they like to use Jesus Christ. Of course, they wouldn't use Allah and Muhammad because they know what will happen if they can get chopped or whip to cut, because this is what happens. But as Christians, we do not harm. But sometimes we have to speak. So I spoke out, and thankfully, that has stopped, at least outwardly. Inwardly, they're probably trying to get it out, but the fear of Jeff has helped things. At least they respect me for it, of course. So, and then the other thing is, please stop sexual talk. Or at least when I'm there. And I said, because the workplace in the UK, you know, the UK people, they love their pubs. I don't know about America. You know, the bars. So there they love the pubs. So they tend to treat the workplace like a pub. They want to come and just talk as they like. So, but thankfully, the managers herself said it. Yeah, this is not a, like a pub. You know, please keep it down and just be mindful of others, respectful of others. So this is where I had a chance to speak out. So sometimes we have to speak out. And, uh, you know, as Brother Zach said, we are, Christ, as Christians, we are not called to be doormats for people to walk over you. Sometimes we have to speak up and be bold rather than be distressed about it all day long. So thankfully, yeah, things do improve.
But nevertheless, I praise God, you know. God has put me there for a purpose. And also, I've come to know is that the atmosphere is a lot more peaceful, a lot more calmer, less bad, no bad language. Occasionally, they tend to bring it up now and again. But at least they don't say it in anger and a lot. But nevertheless, many things have changed. So I praise God for that. Then the next uh, thing I want to go to is Psalm 139. This is what I was encouraging our teens. Saturday, seven evenings, we have a teens meeting on Zoom. So one of us lead that. So the last time I was talking about Psalm 139. Now this, I believe, I'm sure many of you love this Psalm because it talks about God's omnipresence and omniscience all present and all knowing God. So Psalm 139 is such a beautiful Psalm to help and cure us from anxieties and to help us in the light of the verses we've been sharing earlier. I'm not going to read all of it, but just like a few verses where it says, O oh Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know when I sit down, and when I rise up, you understand my thoughts from afar. You scrutinize, or margin says, winnow my path or my journey and my lying down. And this beautiful phrase, and are intimately acquainted with all my ways. Again, it's like the continuation of, for his good pleasure. God is intimately acquainted with all my ways. Now, does it only mean ways that are nice, ways when we are good uh, believers or when everything's going well? No. All my ways. God is intimately acquainted when we are sick, when we are in pain. Of course, not when we are, when we are sinning, but nevertheless, there too, when we sin, what are we supposed to do? immediately acknowledge our sin and immediately repent and then it's over we move on but if we leave it for seconds is bad minutes very bad hours is beyond explanation or oh, go past a day that is almost as good bad as evil but we need to be quick as we heard but again from but Zach, keep short accounts so that is something I've been learning to do over the years. In me, so if you want God to be intimately acquainted with all my ways, and I would say all the time, and we need to be quick to repent, quick to apologize, quick to confess it, taking full blame, full shame, full responsibility, not even a hint of excusing. Because it's so easy, isn't it, when we sin, oh, my wife provoked me, my husband provoked me, my boss pushed me, that one irritated me. Or oh, on the roads, it's certainly a big test sometimes. People cutting across, at least finding few, at least someone doing this. So many ways we can be tested. And I praise God, he allows all these tests so that we can mature and grow stronger, purer, holier. But yeah, intimately acquainted with all my ways, boils down to us, how quick we are to repent, move on in order to enjoy God's continual anointing, continual blessings. And then verse four, even before there is a word on my tongue, behold, O oh Lord, you know it. You have enclosed me behind and before, laid your hand upon me. That's like tremendous verse of God's protection, God's goodness then such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is too high. I cannot attain to it. And that is so true. You know, when we read verses like this, it's like, wow, Lord, you love us so much. I mean, you chose us. We're all not here by accident, but God chose us. He picked us up from the gutter. He gave us a bath of washing and cleansing us and the continual anointing of the Holy Spirit. So I'm not going to read all of it, but I'm going to go to the end. And this is where we have to do our homework. 
You all have homework to do. It's verse 23, 24. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my anxious thoughts and see if there be any hurtful way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. Now, Lord God knows everything. Even he knows our tomorrows. He knows our next year, next decade. And it's just so important that we constantly ask the Lord to you know, search our hearts. Help us to see, is there anything that's displeasing him? So that we do not miss out on God's blessings, God's sovereignty over our lives, God's good pleasure, God working all things for good. So these are tremendous, this chapter has tremendously blessed my heart. And that is what I want to uh, uh, touch on. And then finally, that beautiful promise I want to close in. Again, this is something I've been sharing a lot at our church recently is Jude. The last verse in Jude, last two verses, it says, Now to him, our Lord Jesus Christ, who is able to keep you from stumbling and to make you stand in the presence of his glory, blameless with great joy. It's been a tremendous promise that we have taken for granted and don't uh, value much, but to believe and trust in God when we are truly serious and truly faithful to walk with the Lord in purity, holiness, this promise God has given to us. Because after all, it says now to him, him is our Lord Jesus Christ, he went through the way before us he was in the flesh. Now to him, our forerunner, our intercessor, our mediator, to him who walked in the flesh, tempted in all points as we are, is able to keep us. So we praise the Lord Jesus that we have, we put our hope in him, our trust in him, far above everyone or everything else, and to be intimate with the Lord, like in the August, I don't know if some of you may have heard that, but towards the end of our August conference when Brother Zach spoke the last session, and then we just appreciate, and then I told him, I said, Brother, one thing stands out for me is your intimacy and devotion to Jesus. And I specifically said far above ministry, far above anything else, Brother Zach's example and that is something that has blessed my heart. And I've been taking that more seriously lately. Because ministry, in the beginning, I remember about two, two and a half years ago, but as I called me to join Keith and Raj in the ministry, and I, was, I remember being so nervous. And I said, Brother Zach, I'm very nervous. But nevertheless, with my two brothers who have already in it, I'm sure their love and care, and then he brought Zach himself said, he says, God will help you. He will give you grace. But then, thankfully, I needed a specific word from the Lord. I said, Lord, you've called me to serve. And then amazingly, that very week, Brother Zach had an elders meeting with the U.S. churches, probably, Satish, but probably may have heard it. And that was exactly the word that I needed. And he started off by saying, you know, when we are as elders, we think, oh, elders is about telling people to do this, telling, which is true. It's understood. You know, we delegate, we ask people to help. But the main thing that God spoke to me and that was, is your intimacy and devotion to Jesus. It's your walk with Jesus in the hidden life. That is where we are called to be examples. Others may not, of course, apart from those we live with, may not may see it or not. But that is where in the hidden life, our hidden devotion and intimacy with the Lord is where we lead. Actually, that is for everyone. So it's not just for elders, but for everyone. We all have to be examples, even children. You can be examples to your younger ones, <coughs> younger children to be examples. 
And that is what struck me and I said, thank you, Lord. So that is another thing we all have to concentrate on because when it says, you know, depart from me, I never knew you. It says, they said, oh, we did this, we did that, we did that, Matthew 7. But he says, depart, I never knew you. Because knowing someone is intimate. It's, it's precious. It's a beautiful thing to know someone, to be acquainted with someone, to be intimate with someone. And that is our calling in the Lord, is to be intimate with the Lord. Our devotion to the Lord has to be far above work, job, money, leading, whatever it is. And I am so thankful God gripped me and convicted me with that from the beginning, and that has helped me. So no, so much so, so I don't see ministry as a scary thing anymore. I see it more as a joy to serve the Lord, out of intimacy with the Lord, to serve the Lord in that. And that has been a tremendous blessing. So I truly praise God for the word that he has put on my heart, and I pray that God will help each one of us to be encouraged and to walk with the Lord all heartedly in the days to come.